So those are our deck lists for Akane Kiryu and Stormblast, which is our match that we're gonna have right now. And kind of hop back over. Thank you very much for being patient while we set up between these rounds. What we're looking at now is we have an FTS Sacrifice list, as well as inside of another one uh, that's going to be Stormblast deck. So Stormblast is playing another uh, Fire Time Shadow Sacrifice deck that we've kind of seen before. Uh, very similar to one of the ones that was done earlier by Beard Broken. And then Iconic here to you. <laughs> My cats are downstairs fighting. Sorry about that. Um, we have a Totemite deck. So we have Tota Pioneer, Teething Whelp, Kindling Carver, nice Rakano kind of aggro deck going on here right now. And then we also have, of course, this other deck, like I said, from Stormblessed, which is that FTS sacrifice list. And we're going to be slamming those in right now, so we're going to hop on over to these matches. It's going to be one more moment. All right, there's some very cool decks in this tournament for sure, and we will... Ooh, I do not have Stormblast listed. Uh, sure. We'll hop on over and we're gonna watch from Akana Kiryu first. See if the Totemites are powerful enough to take over Stormblessed Sacrifice deck. We saw the Sacrifice deck earlier just running people over from uh, Beard Broken. And they're different lists, but a similar idea. And of course, a quick mulligan there out of Akane Kiryu. Really flooded on power right here at the start. Make sure that they both know that they can go ahead. Good to go. Make sure that both players know that. And they're ready to go. And they take their turns. We might be waiting on Stormblast deciding on a Mulligan. Might have had a very tough decision. And Akane deciding not to pledge this Tattoo Dragon, which I believe is correct. That that seems right. They've got a really nice hand here. They're close to playing the dragon naturally. They don't want to throw that back. And now the question is, do you start with Crown Watch or Teething? And hey, uh, Akane Kiryu very decisively here decides, no, 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 you definitely want this Paladin first. And throws it down immediately. A uh, bit of a tough spot for Akane right away. Where you don't really want to be attacking, but the whole point of this deck, like, you want to be getting in. I might be wrong. Maybe Akane just goes straight for the face. And they do. Okay, Akane just willing to trade away for both of the drones. Probably not a bad play. Keeping Stormblast off of units here isn't a bad idea, considering they just want to be sacrificing. Oh, no. Amaran Stinger. Oh, that's kind of nasty. Although, in some ways... It's actually a little advantageous as well, because it does mean that Tattoo Dragon actually draws extra cards whenever they find a Scorpion Trap, and they'll get a 2-2 out of it. So we'll see how that works. That's a really interesting interaction. Kind of blanking these Scorpion Traps a bit. But Kiryu doesn't even play the dragon! Oh no! Do they not know? Holding up dive bomb? Worried about removal? I Listen. It kind of works out because instead this tutu gets silenced. But I've got to think this this tattoo dragon has to come down. You've got to play it. 
Kana opting to attack here. This is a dicey situation because, as I was going to say, if there is a block, you kind of can't play the Tattoo Dragon because the Rectifier can silence it again. And Kiryu just still holding on to this dragon. I... Mm, I, I get not wanting to risk it until you can get value off of it, but you do have those scorpion traps in the deck ready and waiting to maybe give you some value, and you've got to do something on this board. Well, there's an answer. Soulfire Drake is something you can play for sure. So I imagine that comes down, and they're attacking the Tutu and the Soulfire, slamming in as hard as possible, just trying to put Storm Blessed on the back foot. This, uh... Soulfire Drake is actually a two-turn threat. And Stormbless opting to si annihilate their own Rectifier so they can silence the Drake, which is a fantastic idea. Not wanting to give Akane Kiryu the charge or flying into their deck, and just able to silence that way instead. And Kiryu attacking here. Let's see if Stormblast sniffs this out. Knowing about the dive bomb. And they don't. Losing their... Ammer and Stinger to it. The problem is, is I, I don't know that Stormblast is that upset by it. Because I think that that was a lot scarier as a finishing blow here. Where if you played like Tattoo Dragon, Burning Core Drake, and just kind of keep the pressure up, it, it can become a lethal strike very quickly. We've got to see this Tattoo Dragon, right? We have to see it. It's got to come in. Kiryu just being super patient with it, deciding still to hold it. You can't hold it forever, though. It's got to eventually become a threat and do something. Oh no, the machinations. Here it comes. We saw this earlier. Machinations in these decks are so powerful. And there comes the scorpion. Missing out on that value. I wanted to see that tattoo dragon. It would have gotten silenced, though, from Rectifier. There's a lot of patience from our players tonight, for sure. But Kiryu is now looking to be in a world of pain with only a sigil in hand and facing down all these machinations units. It's going to be a very tough road to get back into the game here. Kiryu double blocking the 7-6, trading with Kato, and I mean, I get why you do that to try and get rid of something, but... I don't know if there's a way out at this point then, either. And you're leaving it with an 8-8, no cards in hand, yeah, this is just over. Lethal right now, and Akane scoops up the game. A lot of patience out of our players, for sure, a lot of cautiousness. I think there's no small amount of nerves, I mean, it's something to have to play on camera, it, it always affects you a lot more than you realize. We can sit here and talk about it. And I mean, this is a fun tournament. It's just for bragging rights. We're just having a goof. But at the same time, it's still like when you realize there's a bunch of people watching, it changes a lot of the dynamic. And it, it does make you want to make sure that you're not making mistakes. And sometimes that can backfire and lead to different mistakes, right? Wanting to be overly cautious, overthinking your plays is definitely a thing that you can fall into here. And I think we've seen that a bit with these last couple rounds tonight. But we're going to watch uh, now from Stormblast's side and see what's happening. Oh. We have Stormblast maybe not allowing viewers. I often have observers turned off myself, so it makes perfect sense they don't have it. There we go. All right, perfect. Good to go. It looks like a keeper for Stormblast right away, I think. Got the Zensu and Seek Power, lots of uh, different colors of mana, exactly what you want. 
An early sentence who was a lot of threat here. The world will tremble. Lots of good cultists, of course, too, from Stormblast with Kato, with Rectifier, tons of different options. Immediate removal, though. Good answer to that Zenzu. Unfortunately, Stormblast has kind of the what's turning out to be the menace of this format so far, Aramot's Machinations, which has been so powerful for these games. We'll see what's happening uh, on Akonikiryu's side, though. A uh, Dragonforge is a good sign. That's something they can use to get a lot of really powerful cards. But, yeah, like... Kind of the double whammy that these FTS decks have been able to deploy is playing Nahid's Distillation to get a 3 for 1, and Aramot's Machinations is a 3 for 1. And there's not a lot in this format when you only have a limited number of rares and uh, legends to play that can compete on that level of power. It's so big. It's a massive swing one direction or the other. We've kind of seen that happen over and over. So yeah, Stormblast is going to start using the Carver right away, get a Spark Catcher, and maybe High Profit. I call on the power of Saul. Yeah, like, look at how much damage and power this is so early for Stormblast. Set up incredibly well, with a Machination still in hand, and they're still almost even on cards versus Akane, just because of how much you can get out off of these real fast. Yeah, Nakani deciding to kill the High Priest of Soul here to stop a little bit of the power that Stormblast has, but we know it's kind of futile. They've got the silence, they've got another another distillation in hand. I like Stormblast just deciding to stop that tattoo dragon here because it's one of the few cards I think Akane has that can actually really fight the value that Stormblast has. Speaking of, there's one of the other ones though. Getting Tota Pioneer and Kindling Carver. So we're gonna get a very cheap Tota Pioneer, free in fact, because of the fact that it just makes extra power when you draw your second card. Sacrificing, getting a Torch. So you're able to kill the Kindling Carver on Stormblast side. And if you want, they can give it Overwhelm. Big, big turn here for Akane. I don't know that it's enough, though. When you've got Distillation and Machinations, it's so much value. There is a bit of a problem here that, like, Stormblast does still need to answer the Kindling Carver and the Tota Pioneer. I guess, yeah, no, they kind of have it. They can silence one now, and then machinations after to silence the other. Interesting they didn't opt to silence both this turn, because that was definitely an option. They could have silenced one, and then machinations brought it back, and silenced the other. Deciding not to do that, though. Letting this Tota Pioneer last a little bit longer. Getting a free extra draw off the treasure trove. Uh-oh, and Akane just... Pumping up the Kindling Carver and attacking, which I feel is a really bad sign. There's not a lot they can play on, too. Hey, thank you for the raid, Kalos. We're in the middle of our tournament here. We have Akane versus Stormbless. I'll finish this quickly. Ooh, okay. Stormbless is a game up currently. And just a chump block here from Akane. Which I don't know that I agree with. We talked about it earlier, giving uh, Scorpion Traps to Akane's deck with things like Tota Pioneer and Tattoo Dragon is kind of a double-edged sword because it does mean a double draw and will give like those uh, two twos off of a Tattoo Dragon or extra power off of a Tota Pioneer. Yeah, this is a pretty back-breaking turn. Kane deciding to block both. They do have Dive Bomb as one of the cards in their deck. So in their deck, Akane Kiryu can Dive Bomb this. And that is in fact what we're seeing. I think maybe the block still should have gone out there. Storm is very far ahead for sure. Double Distillation 
Aramot's machinations are a hell of a combo. Silence the flyer. Start just digging again with another kindling carver. I mean, this is the problem, like, carver, carver, distillation, distillation. It just kind of keeps rolling over and over and over. And I don't know that Kiryu can get back in this. They really need to find a tattoo dragon, if anything. Because that's something that might be able to fight on this level. Try and give some amount of this power, but yeah, it doesn't look like it. And it's very quickly spiraling out of control. I think maybe you needed to kill the Carver, but it's such a toss-up. Obviously, Zenzu is going to give a lot of, uh, like, going to be a very big threat here. Going to be able to gain a lot of life, become very large. It's going to be tough no matter what. Yeah, now we see Tota Pioneer Silence. Stormblast flooding out a bit, but their board position is so far ahead, I don't know that it matters. Kindling Carver with the... Sorry, Akane Kiryu with the Kindling Carver, though. We are Getting a Covetous Stranger. Oh, no! Here comes Kato, and there are ten units in the void, so we're immediately seeing two 8-8s. Not one, but two, thanks to Kindling Carver. And Stormblast sitting on 18 power. And a massive board advantage. Two 8-8s and Kiryu with just the only two cards in hand. No board wipes in their deck. And it, I would say that, that looks like it's the end of this match. With Stormblast taking it down 2-0. There would be a minor miracle to get Akane out of this. Now maybe a major one. Yeah, full short deals with one of the 8-8s, but not both of them. And that looks like it's the end. Quite a bit of flood here from Stormblast, but it just doesn't matter when they've gotten this much value. Well played by Akane trying to get back into this game. They really dragged that out as much as they could trying to find an answer. But these sacrifice decks, Kindling Carver, Distillation and Machinations is just such a great value uh, plan that it's really been hard for other decks to deal with it. That being said, we're going to go to our next round here, I believe, as long as people are ready. And we might see somebody try and take it down because we have Stormblast winning over Akane and yet another 2-0. That does mean, though, that Makai versus Stormblast can be up. We've got still another chance for Akane to come back because, of course, we've got the loser's bracket. It is a double elimination tournament. That's only the first loss, so they get a chance against Arzu to redeem themselves. And we're going to do those ones later as well.